Hello, um, this video is going to be an attempt to go through our financial math notes. Um, it's going to be kind of a lengthy video because I'm going to try and get it all in one shot. This is stuff that we've covered in class over the course of two days, but I do uh, want to have uh, some, some backup of that. Um, I'm not going to, there's some stuff you're going to see in here that has already been uh, pre-written, obviously, as you're looking at the screen right now. Um, just because uh, for the, the interest of time of, of the video. So I pre-wrote pre some, some information and we'll just walk through it. So you can pause the video um, or look at the, the written notes to, uh, to fill this out on your own. But um, to start with our financial math, this is going to be building on our ideas of sequences. And so the first thing we've got is our lender, and that's uh, obviously the person who lends you, who lets you borrow something. The borrower is the person who gets something temporarily for a certain price. So the borrower is paying and the lender is getting some money or services. Now, technically, this could be services, but you know, in our, our cases, since we're talking about financial, we'll say they're paying or getting money. When we talk about principal, it's going to be the initial amount of the uh, whatever is borrowed. The interest is a fee or amount added to the principal. So this is usually what a borrower has to pay to the lender for the the benefit of getting this um, getting this this object or this loan or whatever it might be. The interest rate is how is how they calculate the principal or the how they calculate the interest. I should say the interest, and then the period. The period is the number of times that we're going to calculate the interest now and, and that the interest is added onto the balance or the principal. So um, the period is always going to be a time and it can come in a lot of different ways. So you'll see the period talked in terms of annual or semi-annual, which is twice a year, every six months. You've got quarterly, monthly, daily, hourly, you know, you could go on and on, but it's, it's a, some period of time that's associated with that. Compound interest is when uh, you get interest based on the balance of the previous period. So what I like to say is you're getting interest on your interest. And we're going to look at an example right down here that goes through uh, how to compound some interest. And then finally, for the initial part of our, of our discussion, per annum, uh, or PA is an abbreviation, means per year. So uh, often your interest rates are stated per annum. Um, so you need to know that this is an annual interest rate, so you might have to do some adjustments for that. So let's look at this first example. Uh, suppose you want to invest $1,000 into a bank that pays 4% per annum, so 4% per year. What is your investment worth at the end of one year? So since it's not saying that it is uh, calculating quarterly or monthly, we can assume that the period is going to be annual. It's going to be an annual bit. So how we would find this is we would take $1,000, that's our principal, times our interest rate. Now, this 1.04, that comes from 100% plus 4%. So 100% is the 100% of the principal plus 4% in addition to that 100%. So if here in this case, the bank is actually paying you interest because you gave them your money, you put it in, in the, the bank, and the bank is then going to use that money for other things. So they're saying, well, hey, thank you for letting us to hold on to your $1,000. Um, we're going to pay you for letting us hold that in there. That's, that's kind of what's happening here. So, uh, so that's why you're getting money. That's why you're getting interest back. So 100% of the interest plus another 4% or 100% of the principal plus 4% in interest. If we convert it to decimals, that is 1.0, right? 100, 100% converts to 1 as a decimal. 4% is 0 0.04. Uh, so we get 1.04. So that's what we get when we do 1,000 times 1 1.04. It's kind of a shortcut way to add the interest directly onto the principal in one calculation as opposed to saying, I'm going to take 1,000, I'm going to multiply it by 4%, I'm going to get 40, and then I'm going to take 40 and add it onto 1,000. So this kind of cuts a step out or a step or two out of your calculations. Okay, so that's, what, that's how much you would have after one year. After two years, well, we would still start with our initial amount, and now, now notice we're starting to use U of 0. So our initial amount uh, equals 1,000, that's our principal, 
And then after one year, we just did that calculation, we get a 1,040. After two years, we're going to take 1,040 and we're going to multiply it by 1.04 again, right? That's the 100% of the 1,040 plus an additional 4%. And so this is where you can start seeing how you get your interest on your interest because this 4% is going to be calculated on that $40 of interest that you had before. So uh, having interest on your interest is a nice thing, and that's why we often use compounding interest. Um, so in this case, if we wanted to break this down into how did we find this, that was 1,000 times 1.04. And then we're taking this 1.04 and that's becoming this right here. And so I'm breaking this down because we're going to start seeing a pattern as we do with, with sequences and series and this, this compounding interest. We now have $1,000, our principal times 1.04 squared. Aha. So now if we go one step further and we look at what happens after three years. Okay, so we've got our principal. We've got how much we calculated after one year. We've got how much we've calculated, which is this, how much we've calculated after two years. Aha, how much we calculate after three years. Okay, there's a pattern. Notice that the interest is, the, the power of the, the interest rate is the same as our term number. So here's our value, and now when we want to calculate it after n years, we can see that this is the same thing as this. Un, it's a little different from our um, general, uh, general geometric uh, sequence formula because uh, that uses u of 1, and so this was n minus 1. But since now we've got, uh, we're starting at our, our initial time, no time has passed, where we're, we're starting at u of 0 instead of u of 1. So that's why this has shifted down to be n, and it actually matches up with our n. Um, this is this is often done in financial math and and in some of the sciences as well. And we'll see some science examples in uh, other videos. So ultimately, what we have then is we have this as our general formula for uh, financial compounding interest. Uh, so you have your u of n equaling u of n equaling u of zero, which is our principal, times one plus interest rate. Uh, and the interest rate is the rate per compounding period. So in this case, it was just one year, so we just had 0.04, or uh, yeah, 0 0.04 in there. Now we're going to see in the next example what happens if it's not annual, what happens if it's, if it's quarterly or, or monthly or something like that. Um, so we've got our, pr our principal times our interest rate uh, based per, on per compounding period. And, and here's this little note over here as well. Most interest rates are stated per annum. So if we have something that's different, we're going to have to do some adjustments or some calculations to find this value for I here. Um, and then finally, we've got uh, the power, which we saw here. The power matches up with the number of compounding periods. In this case, it was years. So that will line up as well that uh, we have how many times we're going to calculate this benefit or this investment or this loan or whatever it is. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Um, 5,000 pounds is invested for four years at 3% per annum, compounded quarterly. Find the investment at the end of this period. That's uh, letter A, which is not listed here for some reason, letter A. Find the value that, of that invested at the end of the period and how much interest was paid. Okay, so let's start mapping this out. This is a good thing to do anytime you've got sequence and series questions, financial math questions, let's lay out what we know. We know that this 5,000 is our principal. That's our principal, and that is also what we call U of zero. We know that we have uh, our, we are compounding, let's see, we are com uh, we've got four years, so that's lining up with our time period, four years, but we're compounding quarterly. So quarterly means four times per year. Quarterly, quarterly equals four times per year. So that means in total, if we're going four years, four times per year, that means we're going to have four years times four times per year. Uh, so we've got 16 periods. 
So our n, this is our n, or I guess we could should say this over here is our n value. This is n. So there's our n. That looks kind of weird. But that's that's what that is. This is n. Um, all right, so, uh, so we've got our n, we've got our u of 0, and now we need to find our i. We need to figure out what is our interest rate. Now, this says 3% per annum, so uh, we need to find out what that 3% is, what the 3% is per quarter. So I'm going to take this 3%, and I'm going to divide it by 4, because that is, that's our i, whoops, that's our i, and that is uh, going to be 3% is 0 0 0.03, divided by 4, which is uh, 0 0.0075, I believe is what it is. So that's our I as a decimal. I often do this stuff as a decimal as opposed to a percent, uh, just because it's easier to work with for me. So if I want to find out, okay, so now I've got all my information, right? I've got my principal, I've got my, I've got my principal, I've got my interest rate per period, and I've got the number of periods that I have. So I can now calculate uh, my, my um, I can now calculate how much I'm getting for that period. So U of 16, because I want to know at the end of the four years, so N is 16, U of 16 is equal to U of 0, which is 5,000 times, 1.0075, so I just did, I just did the, the basic addition right in there, to the power of 16. And when I calculate all of that, I get a final value of, and actually, you know what, I'm going to do this because you know I like my colors. Uh, we'll put our 16 there. So our value at the end of 16 uh, quarters or 16 periods is 5,000. Six hundred thirty-four dollar or pounds and ninety-six cents. So there we go. There is our answer for that one. Now, how much is the interest paid? Well, of course, uh, this should be fairly intuitive. If we have originally invested five thousand uh, pounds, then our interest is going to be the difference of this and that. So we simply take five thousand six hundred thirty-four. And we subtract our 5,000, and we get a value of 6. Uh, let's see. If I, let's see if I can do this symbol. I think it looks like that. Um, of 634.96 pounds, British pounds. So there's our interest that's paid over that time period. All right, so let's take a look at another one. Um, so how much does a Ivana need to invest now to get a maturing rate? How much does Ivana need to invest now to get a maturing value of $10,000 in four years' time, given 8% per annum, compounded twice annually? Oh, geez. Okay, so um, let's take a look. Per, uh, per annum, uh, compounded twice annually. So that means uh, two times, two times, uh, two times per year, per year, and we are doing this for four years, for four years, so that means n, and the number of periods that we're going to compound is going to be eight. We know that our interest, 8%, percent, point zero eight, divided by, uh, per, this is, now this is per year, so we need, if this doing it twice annually, we need to divide this by 2. So we're going to divide that by 2, and we get an interest rate of 0 0.04. So there is our I value. So we've got N, we've got I, and we are looking for, we're, we're trying to find U of 0. So how much does she need to invest now? This, invest now, that's our U of 0, that's our principal. So this here is our, this here is our U of N, or our U of, uh, what is that, U of 8. 
So, so all we're going to do is we are going to substitute all of this stuff in, and we're just going to work backwards to find uh, to find our um, our principal that we would need to invest now. So u of eight, u of eight equals, well, we know that equals ten thousand dollars, and that's going to equal u of zero, u of zero times times 1.04 to the eighth power. All right, so we're, we'll de we're definitely going to have to use some calculators for some of this stuff. You're not going to be able to do this stuff in your head, but um, I don't think, maybe someone will. So we've got 10,000, and we're going to actually, here, let's do this. We're going to divide both sides because we're trying to find u of zero, so we're going to divide both sides by 1.04 to the eighth power. Divide by 1.04 to the eighth power. So u of zero, the principal, the amount that we need to invest now is equal to 1,000, or sorry, 10,000 divided by 1.04 to the eighth power. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to just put that uh, in uh, to my calculator. And uh, let's see, I'll do it on the side here. That is equal to uh, 7,300 six dollars and ninety cents or thereabouts so you would want to invest uh maybe you would want to say well because you're not probably not going to do that so maybe you say 3707 uh that's how much you want to invest now right so either one of those is okay so that's what ivana needs to do okay awesome